alert, alert, alert. Hi, Chris Parrott from Equity Guru here. Uh, I have come to you today to talk about a company called Amped, A-M-P-D. Why am I talking about Amped today? Because, dude, it's time for the freaking rubber to hit the road. I have been a shareholder in this company since before it was public. I was one of the people who helped walk it around town and find someone to put it into a public vehicle. And the reason that I did that is because I, I knew that people running this company were good, smart, connected people in a really hot sector that nobody yet understood. And my thinking was, if you get it out public so that they can raise money as they need to grow and slowly tell this story to a smart retail base, that the smart retail base would connect, buy in and drive this thing to the moon. Now, you can't always have what you want on the public markets. Sometimes you go out there with the guys that you'd like. Sometimes you go out there with the guys you can get. And unfortunately, a lot of time, a new public company will find itself engaged with guys who come in and say, I'll raise you 5 million bucks. What do you need? You want 10 million? You want 12 million? Sure, I'll do it for you. But hey, let's get some cheap paper while we're at it. And unfortunately, Amped, you know, is occasionally drawn itself a to these people, uh, sometimes out of necessity, sometimes out of uh, just being rookies on the public market scene. Uh, I don't mind saying it. I like these guys. I'm still invested in this company, but we are at a point now where the lessons of going public for the first time have been experienced and learned, and the lessons involved in having to educate the public on what your great technology is have been experienced and have been learned. So Amped is currently sitting at a, at a I think, 52-week low. Um, it's definitely gone up at times. It's definitely come down at times. But the real struggle for Amped has always been people want to see the revenue in the books. Now, I understand that if you're convincing an animation company to move all of their online storage and tools and rendering from AWS to your custom built smaller group, that's going to take some time, right? It doesn't, it's not just a case of, hey, we're cheaper. Oh, let's move everything we do over here. No, like once you're, you have a, a, a path, once you understand how you do business with your business, you don't necessarily want to uproot everything and go and rebuild things somewhere else, especially if you're not sure if that company's going to stick around for a long time. You know, like maybe they run out of money. Maybe they won't be here next year. Convincing these big behemoths to move the video rendering outfits to a smaller outfit, it's hard, it takes time. You've got to prove yourself. You've got to demonstrate that you're still here six months in, a year in, two years in, before they take you seriously. Now, back in the day, a lot of Bitcoin miners, when Bitcoin went down, uh, they said, oh, all these mining contraptions that we've built, uh, we're just going to move them into video render. We'll make our money that way. Uh, and none of it happened. No one, nobody did that because of what I just talked about. It's difficult to convince an animation company worth billions to come and make their next movie on your chintzy little Bitcoin miners. It's just not going to happen. So for Amped, the base of their business was bespoke <coughs> uh, high-performance computing spaces to do high-performance computing things that don't require the massive bandwidth payments and slowdowns and rough tools that you maybe have at Amazon Web Services and Google and Microsoft. Okay, so here we are. They've managed to bring some customers along. They've managed to demonstrate their worth, but we're still in this place where, where's the money? Well, there's two problems. One, the money sometimes doesn't come in a press release, right? Sometimes you do deals with guys that are happy for you to say, we did a deal with a large company. They're not necessarily happy for you to put their name in the press release. And for business uh, competitive reasons, you don't necessarily want to take the amount of money that you're making and make it public so that everyone else sees that as the new price. Sometimes you got to cut deals. Yeah. So at the end of each quarter, revenue's going up for Amped. It's, it, it is doing that and it has been doing that consistently. But it's not up to a point where people would say, oh crap, well that market cap doesn't make sense. So what they've needed to do was to upside things a little bit, to add an extra element that is built on the base of that high performance computing, but isn't reliant on only that as revenue. So what they've done is they've got involved in virtual movie production. Now, virtual movie production is movie production now, right? It used to be Hollywood studios that get a hammer and nails and they'd build a set and they'd shoot 30 seconds and then they'd strike the set 
build another set, shoot for three minutes, straight. Spend a lot of money, take a lot of time, six month shoot instead of what it could be a 26 day shoot. Uh, lots of guys walking around in green leotards in front of green screens and, oh, the monster's getting me, but there's no actual monster that you can see. Move forward, now we've got a entire movie industry and TV industry built around the Unity video game engine, right? So, okay, you get, instead of going into a movie studio, now you get your guys into a VR studio, essentially. Uh, a, a big ring of LED screens, a massive LED screen that wraps all the way around the set, above and even below, right? So you're in basically an LED ball. The Unity video game engine is then used to create a world around the actor so that the uh, director can see what's being seen on the camera, so that the actor can turn around and see the monster behind them, so that the, the glow and the shadows from that monster behind them is actually projected on the side of their face rather than a green glow that has to be removed later. Uh, and if there's a problem, hey, can we move the sun a little bit that way? Thank you very much. Can we turn it from five o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock at night? No problem. Click, 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 and it's done. Virtual movie production is the new way of making movies. Uh, big Hollywood blockbusters, small movies, uh, TV series, even music videos are now being done in virtual settings rather than having to fly out to Morocco and build a, a town in the middle of the desert. How does this apply to Amped? Well, Amped is there. Amped is there providing the actual hardware to make that Unity engine work and to supply it to the background of the cast. Uh, these guys have built a product that comes in a box, rolls out on a set, plugs everything into it, and you've got a massive amount of compute that can suck down all of this data in real time. And instead of having it to be uh, on film or instead of having it to be uh, put together later on by the VFX guys, everything can be done in camera, on set, on the day. This is a massive, massive thing. And if Ant can make itself invaluable in both the settings, the studios, and on the software side, for those doing the render, this is a real big deal. And when I say a real big deal, I mean really a big deal. Like, we're not talking like millions of dollars, we're talking potentially billions of dollars. We're talking about being picks and shovels for the entire media industry. Um, now, there's a long way to go to get to that point, but what you wanna see is progress. And progress isn't always on revenue. Sometimes progress is in partners. Now. What we've seen from AMP so far is a lot of partnership agreements, a lot of reseller agreements, a lot of, uh, hey, we're going to do a deal with this guy, we're going to do a deal with this company, but none of it's really sort of come down to that sort of hard tax of like, here is the money coming in. A lot of it has been setting themselves up as being capable, right? Demonstrating that they can do what they say they can do and demonstrating they can do it better than the bigger guys that are out there doing it in clunky ways. So today we got news that Google has closed down Google Stadia, which was their uh, video games on demand, basically their Netflix for video games strategy. Uh, they put a lot of money into it and nobody was interested. Why? Because the internet isn't big enough to basically allow you to just go to a website and say, I will play game number four and have an entire video game going back and forth between. It's just not... It's not doable, right? And right now, you have to have a video game on your computer or platform, and all you're sending back is left, right, up, down, X, Y. Uh, Stadia basically said, okay, well, since we can't actually play the game in its entirety remotely, let's have some dulled down versions of the games so that they're much less uh, stress on the bandwidth side. And it just didn't really work. Nobody's really super keen to play a dumbed down version of the game that they like. So Stadia died. Why did Stadia die? Because there isn't enough Amped around, right? Amped has the technology, has the, the bandwidth and its high performance computing core to do what Google Stadia needed to be done, but it would have needed to have been in every city around the world to make it happen. What Amped is instead doing is zeroed in on the entertainment business and said, we'll create those points of presence in places where we know they'll get lots of use which is video render, movie production. 
Uh, and then every time we have a new one, that is a permanent fixture, right? If we work on a, a digital twinning project at Boeing in Washington State, that creates a new point of presence for us that can be utilized by anyone around there. If they do one in Vancouver, that's a new point of presence that can be used by anyone around there. Montreal, uh, Oslo, where, wherever they get a gig, it expands that network. This is all great, but the problem here, and the problem has always been, people don't understand. Uh, because there are other companies out there that say, we're in the metaverse. Uh, top of the tree being Meta, formerly Facebook, who says that they're gonna make everything the metaverse and put out nice TV ads about it, but don't actually seem to understand what it is. Uh, you've got other companies that are out there saying, hey, we do VR, AR. Uh, look, we've done a deal with a pizza shop in Schenectady, New York, uh, where anyone who goes in and scans a QR code can see on their phone there's a guy flipping a pizza next to the counter. Big fucking deal. Like, who gives a shit? Now, there is a lot in the metaverse as it stands that is going to be fantastic, that is going to be advantageous in research, in logistics, in health, in games, in social life. But all of it requires an important thing that isn't yet developed. And that is the backbone, right? It's the high performance computing that will make it work, not just in big cities, but in little cities and towns in the middle of nowhere. And we haven't yet expanded the internet to the point where it can do those things that are promised. Now, electric cars have been around for a long time, right? Uh, electric cars were around at, at the turn of the century. Uh, in the 1900s, there was electric, electric cars. The problem was batteries sucked, right? The problem was that in order to make it a real electric car that was reliable, you needed a big enough battery, a good enough battery that you could go 400 miles, not 400 feet. And history is littered with the corpses of electric vehicle tryouts that didn't quite make it because the battery technology wasn't there yet. The same exists with the metaverse. The metaverse will be a big deal. Don't fall for the metaverse is all hokiness. No, no. Behind it all, there is some important shit. And 5G Wi-Fi is a step towards that. Uh, but high performance computing on the ground, that's the thing that has to happen before the metaverse is anything useful to anyone. Right now, there are aspects of its spatial, uh, uh, spatial metaverse is being used by verses in uh, production settings, in, in, where, in uh, manufacturing, uh, in logistics. Um, but the real sort of uh, uh, soup to nuts, the you and me experiencing it in our daily lives requires a massive step forward in bandwidth. And Amped is in that business. Now, I know that you look at Amazon and say, well, they're in that business too. They're not. Amazon is in the business of continuing to monetize what already exists, not in cannibalizing its own very successful AWS business to create a niche product for those that are doing things like AI, video render, et cetera, et cetera. They will be the last ones to the party. There is, in the meantime, a very big business for those that can actually build out the backbone of the next formation of the internet. And that's where AMP is. Long story short, we are at a precipice with AMPT, right? I believe in the promise of the people. I believe that they understand the technology. I believe that they're connected enough to make it work and that they've got a lot of big companies doing a lot of interesting things with them in the background. But the time has come for AMPT to show its work. And I say this as a friend. I say this as family. I say this as an early investor that has watched my shareholding slowly sink underwater as people lose patience with the time that it takes to build the next internet. Now, I've always been of the opinion that building the next internet isn't something you'll do in six months. It's not even something you do in three years, but it is something that will happen and it will happen at the small end with high bandwidth uh, uses like artificial intelligence, big data, uh, uh, the internet of things, right? All of these things require a bigger internet than we currently have. So that will come. But we didn't get Netflix until online video was a realistic thing. Before Netflix, we had RealPlayer back in the day. And my God, if you remember watching RealPlayer videos, it was like watching 8-bit games. Uh, it would take half an hour to watch a two-minute video 
And at the end of it, you were like, geez, that was not worth running up my phone bill. So we've always been behind the ball with what can be done combined with what actually is possible with the technology that we currently have. And AMP is in that space right now where they are, and Versus is as well, right? V-E-R-S-E-S, uh, where they are building something for a world that knows it needs it, but doesn't yet know how to make it happen. And when the connective tissue of general technology meets those needs, it'll be companies like AMP and Versus that roar through the roof. And nobody, but nobody will be able to catch up because they'll be the ones that have been there for five years saying, we're still here, we're still alive. Lastly, if you're not yet convinced that AMP is interesting, and I don't even want you to go out and buy it. I don't care if you buy it or don't, but be interested enough to be watching it. And the thing that really gets my hair turning is these guys built a volumetric capture studio down in on Great Northern Way next to Emily Carr, uh, next to all the, the digital uh, uh, colleges, all the, the, the game companies. Right in the midst of that, they have built the world's largest volumetric capture studio. Volumetric capture is when you've got thousands of cameras all, all around you and you're capturing something all at once so that when you put it all together, someone could put on the VR glasses and literally stand next to the band as the band is performing their song or walk behind the drummer or stand in front or go walk into the crowd. It's something that where uh, at a sports event, instead of watching someone who dunk, you could watch from under the basket, right? It's a big deal in the making. Again, a little bit before it's time, but rapidly coming. And these guys have the largest volumetric studio in the world right now, which means that anyone who's willing to pay a bit of money to add that uh, multimedia element, uh, that, that, that immersive media, that interactive media element to their project, the place they're gonna come is amped, right? The amount of money that these guys can charge for that space is, I don't even know, like it's, it's gonna be boss. They've also got deals with virtual production studios uh, that people can't yet visualize because they're building the facilities. But when you actually see the facilities in action, you realize that what Amp has been building isn't something where they're like, we have a dream. It isn't something where they're like, we've got a couple of computers in a, in a room in Saskatchewan. No, no, these guys are actually building out facilities that are maybe one or two or three in the world right now. And the largest of those is belongs to Amped. They're doing it in the middle of the engine of Vancouver's tech sector. They are talking to and negotiating with and doing business with some of the biggest names on the planet. And honestly, I, I think that once people actually see the picture start to take shape, right? Right now, it's like the matrix. We're just seeing ones and zeros and blues and greens and it's all, you can't really figure out what it means. But once those things start forming a picture, Amped is going for mine to be an absolute rocket. Um, so AMPD, get it on your watch list. I don't care if you buy it or sell it, you know, that doesn't really matter to me at all. But at, at 15 cents, I think it's a damn deal. And once people actually can see what they're doing, and I think that's gonna be soon, I think this thing really starts to travel. Either way, believe me or don't believe me, uh, AMPD, and if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get more of these from Equity Guru going forward.